Hey Mayhem fans, get 10% off all digital downloads from the RWA and IWC at sorgatronmedia.com slash store. Use the coupon code on your checkout, Mayhem. Want to have your business or podcast featured on the show? Contact us at info at sorgatronmedia.com. Subject line, advertising. Hungry as fuck, but I ain't starving yet. Chain for the pain, cocktail bar set. Never said I was a gangster or thug, but I'm an animal. Eating for the taste of the fly. Sing, sing, sing. Hey guys, welcome back. It's episode four of the Indie Mayhem Show. Our dedicated little piece of uh, broadcasting here at Sorgatron Mirror, where uh, we like to uh, dedicate to uh, the 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 outskirts of wrestling, the stuff you maybe you don't know about, uh, but we love and we love with a passion. Uh, I'm of course uh, Sorgatron Mike Sorg, uh, leader here over at uh, Sorgatron Media, where you know my experience is uh, doing a lot of production and stuff over the years with, of course, locally here in the Pittsburgh area with the International Wrestling Cartel, with Renegade Wrestling Alliance, a little bit of work here and there, documentaries, uh, helping out with uh, Joe. Dombrowski, uh, and of course, uh, my trusty co host here, the uh, uh, ringside announcer for Inspire Pro Wrestling down in Texas. Eamon, how you doing, sir? I'm doing well, Sorgatron. How are you? All right, all right. Experienced some a really good indie wrestling and a really good the big guys as well as we discussed on the wrestling mayhem show with the royal rumble here in pittsburgh big <laughs> wrestling week here in the pittsburgh area uh but we'll we'll touch on that a bit later but i want to hear about the guest you're bringing in this week from uh your neck of the woods yes we have a very special guest uh, who i know very well uh this week on the wrestling mayhem sh- or i should, should, should say on the indie mayhem show sorry i gotta get used to that um he is well traveled uh knowing him from his travels in texas as well as uh st louis he has competed uh among many companies and he's here to talk about a lot including uh, a big event uh for upcoming for st louis anarchy uh he is the current st louis anarchy uh heavyweight champion uh one gary J. gary how are you I'm doing pretty fantastic on this evening. How are you guys doing? Great. Uh, we're glad to have you on. Uh, we had you on, a, I want to say, like a year and a half ago back during the Wrestling Mayhem show, but I, I definitely wanted to have you back on for the Indie Mayhem show to talk indie wrestling and talk all the stuff you're doing and your sort of the breakout year that you've been uh, you've been having in wrestling. Um, I guess we can get right into it, uh, and I guess the only way we should do it is um, what we've been doing as of late is sort of getting to know um, people's start in wrestling, uh, especially with independent wrestling. It's sort of, um, you have people, interesting stories of how they got their start. Um, first, uh, I'd like to know, uh, what was your first memory of professional wrestling? Like when you first started watching and then also what was your way of like, um, getting into it? Uh, I guess my first memory would be, uh kind of vague all i really remember is macho Ren, randy savage and his crazy outfits and hat <laughs> so, i i could i could see you take a lot of inspiration as far as wardrobe goes yeah like i don't like really remember how it just kind of happened i just started watching it one saturday afternoon and then it just kind of got hooked and then obsessed with it as i still am to this day awesome uh, and so you got when did you start to discover, I guess, that there was indie wrestling out there and, and sort of the avenue in which that you could, you know, eventually become a pro wrestler? Um, I guess you could say, obviously, I watched WWF before it was E and then WCW. But I was mm-hmm. flipping through a cable like brochure magazine when I was a teenager, maybe early teens, and I saw this Guilty as Charge pay-per-view. I was like, what the hell is this? I was like, <laughs> oh, no. I was a spoiled little punk, so I was like, hey, mom, I'm getting this pay-per-view. Live with it. And uh, <laughs> so I remember ordering that, and that was, like, my first ECW experience. So that was kind of, like, I guess, indie, but, like, on a bigger level, almost, like, I, I think ECW was bigger than WCW, so. Mm. So that was your first so taste, sort of, get, getting into that sort of, like, smaller, like, uh, contained, uh, like, style of wrestling. Yeah, and then, uh, like, I lived in Massachusetts when that kind of happened, and then I moved to Missouri, and then I just kind of started, like, watching, like, cable access, and they had uh, something called Gateway Championship Wrestling on, and then I used to uh, ask people for for change at lunch when I was in high school, and then I'd go to the shows, like, that Friday or Saturday night, and it kind of just snowballed into me wanting to wrestle. 
Mm. Very cool. So you started wrestling basically through them, uh, training under um, them, I believe. Not not gateway actually. Uh, I actually started with the XWA, which is defunct now because it lasted all about two fucking months. So, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, basically, I uh, I met Pierre Abernathy in uh, high school when I was in tenth grade, and I I was friends with his friend uh, Peter Townsley who. He, uh, he went to summer camp, let's say, for a long time. So uh, I met uh, I met those two in high school, and then we ended up meeting Jordan Lacey, who had a ring, and he trained us in the side yard for a little bit. And then we ended up meeting Adam Raw and Nick Tyson, and those those two were very two big influences in how I trained and what I am now. Hmm. And very cool. So, and you sort of break up. I know you uh, sort of began. I don't know if it was the original start, but I know you spent your early years as a Gary the Barn Owl uh, with your, uh, your it's sort of an interesting uh, gimmick, you could say. Uh, and what what was sort of your like working your early years working the independent scene? What's some of the stuff I guess you you learned or, or you realized from from working you know that scene? Um. Uh, the biggest thing I noticed is that I wanted to Jeff Hardy as much as I wanted to be. They gave me this stupid <laughs> gimmick that is now, you know, Gary the Bar now, but I hated that gimmick when I first started. Like, <laughs> I just wanted to be Jeff Hardy flipping off ladders. What the fuck did I know? I was just like 17 year old kid in high school wanting to be a professional wrestler, not knowing anything about anything at the time. So then it basically all snowballed into like, I loved working the Gary the Bar gimmick, but like the biggest thing, like, shock to me was like, I had no clue what I was doing for the first three or four years, I believe. Mm. So it, for that for that long, you 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 sort of felt like you were sort of, I guess, in more of a growing period, I guess you could say? Yeah, like I, I still feel like I really just over the last maybe two, two and a half, three years have gotten really comfortable now to where like I feel like I'm progressing. So like the first six years of my career, I feel was like a, like, kind of stagnant per se i don't know it's it's just weird to look at through my eyes mm. um that's actually interesting because uh, one of the things i i definitely wanted to bring up having you on the show um because i know you through um uh, obviously me being in texas your work in anarchy championship wrestling and, and your travels down here in texas um and what i really wanted to talk about since we're talking about indie wrestling on this show and we're talking about sort of all the stuff that goes on in sort of an indie wrestling world, you guys are, and all of your St. Louis uh, brethren, I guess you could say, are really big on the travel. Um, you guys travel from St. Louis, I would say like 13, 14 hours down to Texas to wrestle and then also have to do the drive back. I, I wanted to actually know, because I, I, when did you start uh, doing those sort of travels and, and, and what was sort of the thing that compelled you guys to do that? Um, honestly, like in that early part of my career, like the first three to four or five years, like I'd always do seminars with guys that were like better than me or like they were indie names. Like I'd always do that. And they'd always be like, you need to get your name out there. You need to travel. And that always kind of, it's something that I always think about is like, you know, you're not going to make it anywhere, or make any money or, you know, get any recognition or do anything. If you're just a local guy staying in your hometown wrestling once every other month. If mm -hmm. you're really wanting to do this and make a shot at it, you need to be out there every weekend and anywhere you can go. And so, do you, when what, when would you say you started actually like doing that sort of like long distance, long distance sort of traveling? Um, I guess our debut show for ACW, I believe it was in San Antonio, Texas, the venue. I uh, wrestled Peter Abernathy. I guess that was our first really long first road trip. And uh, I have to give credit to uh, ACW or, you know, Darren Childs because basically that just came about because me and Pierre would just bother the shit out of him on MySpace wanting to come down and work because <laughs> we just saw the MySpace and thought it was a good opportunity. So we just bothered the crap out of him. He finally said, you know, if you guys show up, I'll let you guys wrestle. And, you know, he actually didn't think we were going to show up, but we actually showed up and we wrestled. And that's kind of how we started that relationship with Anarchy Champs for wrestling. Very cool, and and you've been traveling there ever since, and and uh, the the sort of long drives that go in from traveling from St. Louis to Texas. What what is sort of the, I guess going putting uh, everyone who's listening in your shoes, like what's sort of the pitfalls that comes with like making those long drives, like the negatives or the positives? Uh, well, well, you can do a little bit of both, a little bit of both. 
Um, the negative would be probably like, like as much as I love traveling and everything, you know, I'm, you know, I'm married, you know, I have stuff going on at home. So like recently over the last couple of years, like I love traveling as much as I love, you know, coming home and just being lazy on the couch for a day or two. Cause like, obviously mm-hmm. with the travel and you know, how much you put your body through the whole time. And then like, say you have a really grueling match or, you, you know, something goes wrong, you're sore or hurt you're still 14 hours away from home. So you got to be uncomfortable for 14 hours until you get any kind of, you know, stretchability or stretching or even sometimes right. showers, you know? So mm-hmm. those are some of the negatives. Some of the positives are just pretty much, it's like the parents are out of town in the car ride and there's no adults. So a whole bunch of goofball kids are just having a great time being jerk offs <laughs> and doing whatever they want per se. There's always, and it's sort of, I guess the whole, a lot of people talk about wrestling sort of building like, friendships and everyone sort of like becoming family and you would i guess you would say that the travel win those long distances sort of like aids in that aspect yeah you definitely get to know anybody you're traveling with like me pierre evan like we've known each other for a long time now and then you know we started bringing baby vega down he was a local guy but like i didn't know him as well now but now he's pretty much family to me like you know obviously he's like a brother to me and then we start bringing matt fidget down and i believe like back in the early days of ACW, like Dingo was going down a lot too. Mm-hmm. I, uh, I actually give a lot of credit to Dingo helped me out a lot in my career too. Cause like, he's one of the people that like him and Adam Raw, like two guys that really helped me like become the character I am today with like me being aggressive and everything. Awesome. Uh, so I wanted, I wanted to touch on, cause you mentioned how like sort of in your first couple of years, you did, you sort of thought you were coming into your own uh, because I think, 2013 definitely was a big breakout year for you, uh, and and you're starting to I think I think get recognized for more people, and I think rightfully so. Um, one of the definitely places you had that breakout year was uh, in the company that you're currently champion for, St. Louis Anarchy. Um, what 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 is you uh, your experience this past year for St. Louis? Uh, obviously, becoming champion, and uh, how how do you feel like you've grown uh, sort of even this year or the past couple of years? Well, like you said, like St. Louis Anarchy started, you know, after the LWA went away. And the LWA mm-hmm. before that, before St. Louis Anarchy, I was pretty much scared of the barn owl. I, I was, I was a baby face. I never talked, you know. And then at the very end of LWA, I become Gary the Night Owl, which was still a heel character, but I had never talked. Mm-hmm. And then I finally went heel down in ACW as Gary J. And I slowly realized that I could do this talking thing and just be really witty and be a jackass and you know be your heel character and then with St. Louis Anarchy I've definitely developed like this whole aura you know including you know with my mom my dad and now with you know the the new group that just established boss in in, uh, St. Louis Anarchy so like St. Louis Anarchy has helped me grow like with just my character overall and then they're putting me in there with guys that are a hell of a lot more talented and better than me just making me even better you know like with David Richards Sammy Callahan uh I'm wrestling Roderick Strong on February 28th. I mean, that's going to be a challenge. That's going to be a test. And then guys like Kyle O'Reilly, like I've been in the ring with some of the best around, and it just you know helps everybody out, but it really helps me out because it takes me to that next level. Very cool. Uh, and you mentioned, because the one thing I definitely wanted to have you on to talk about was the uh, St. Louis Anarchy double shot that's coming up for a Gateway to Anarchy um, February 28th and March 21st. Um, like you mentioned, you're wrestling Roderick Strong and you're wrestling uh, – uh, you're facing Kyle O'Reilly for the, your title in a two out of three falls match. Um, what sort of your, your prep going into, uh, I guess these two contests, um, like you mentioned, you've wrestled guys like a Davey Richards, like a Sammy Callahan, some people who I think are the ones that are sort of revered in indie wrestling as some of like the hardest hitters. And, and you're, I, you personally, I think your biggest strength is you're a, one of those upper comers when it comes to like one of those hard strikers, uh, just intense, uh, competitors, um, so what's your strategy, I guess, going into that weekend of, uh, of shows? Um, I don't know. Just train really hard for it, uh, focus and just, you know, do what I do best going with the game plan and just be really aggressive. You know, you can't back down. These guys have been all over the world. So, I mean, I've wrestled Kyle O'Reilly before and I've lost. So, you know, this is my time to, uh, beat him, you know, and especially in a two out three falls match, but I've never been in the ring with Roderick Strong. So that's going to be a test. So, I mean, you can train as hard as you want for it, but, I mean, you just need to go in, go into a balls to the wall, you know, headstrong. 
Oh, but yeah, definitely. Um, the one thing I we talked sort of hard hitters, and one of the matches you had recently that I wanted to also ask you about, uh, sort of get your take on uh, for IWA Mid South. I know recently you wrestled in what a lot of people were considering a dream matchup uh, against the Necro Butcher. Um, what what was sort of uh, what what was sort of your take out of the match that you two had, and what was your experience uh, getting to wrestle someone uh, with sort of the reputation that Necro has? Um. It was it was an honor. I mean, I've always watched Necro Butcher, and I've always thought, man, if I ever wrestle him, he's going to beat the shit out of me. And, you know, he did, but I <laughs> beat shit out of him. You know, it's one of those things where I saw the match was booked. I saw it on paper, and I'm like, well, people know they're just going to get two guys beating shit out of each other. There's nothing pretty about it, you know? <laughs> mm. So, but, yeah, it was, a, it was a learning experience, and, you know, it was – I was happy with it. I mean – I think hopefully everybody that bought a ticket or, you know, gets the DVD, you know, enjoys it. I mean, at the end of the day, I'm there to entertain the fans. Awesome. Yeah, and I definitely can't wait for that to come out on DVD because I'm sure I'm sure that's going to be really fun. Um, so well, I guess we talked about it before we actually started the show, but I wanted to also get into it. Um, you mentioned uh, one of the things, if you know Gary J, if you've seen Gary J, that uh, he's infamous for uh, is the amazing jackets, uh, your ring jackets, um, and you meant and you uh, gained some new ones as of late. The uh, the old retro. I I know you mentioned last time uh, you were on about how uh, you had discovered it uh, through uh, Pierre Abernathy's mom, I believe. Um, and but I believe you've gotten some new jackets by some sort of happenstance, I guess you could say. Um. Yeah. Oddly enough, I uh, the original jacket came from. Uh, Good old TJ, I'll give you a holler, TJ. You have no clue what I'm talking about, or you'll never hear this because you get on Facebook on someone else's page and look at stuff. But hey, TJ, what's up? Uh, <laughs> but the original came from her closet, and then I wrestled Davey Vega in Texas in ACW. I won his jacket, so that was the second one. And then, you know, I started wearing them the ring a lot in St. Louis Anarchy, and a group of fans started wearing them, and then uh, they started buying me the jackets. So now, like, before the shows, they'll give me jackets. So basically now I just tour the country with different jackets. It just depends what mood I'm in to wear them. It's definitely got to be an honor uh, to gain the to gain that along your uh, along your travels. I, yeah, I, I gotta, it's pretty neat. It's weird. <laughs> I got to ask, so, so you're getting all these from the fans. Like, what is, like, the weirdest thing a fan has given you, whether it's a jacket or something else at this point? Um, the weirdest, you know, I don't really have any crazy weird stories. Like you get your, your Facebook messages once in a while that are a little weird, like, you know, towards, you know, just the more sexual from other guys. And, you know, I have nothing wrong with that, but it's just not mm. my personal preference, but that's the weirdest, but nothing like personally weird, like in person. Hmm. Hmm. Well, well, maybe one day, maybe one day. Um, I guess the one thing that we can go to, um, I, I posted out uh, uh, that we were going to be interviewing you. We actually got a couple Twitter questions uh, that I want to uh, that all, I want to address. They're all from me under different Twitter names. I swear to God. <laughs> <laughs> well, one's from a, a, a guy I kn I know, and I'm sure you know very well from St. Louis. Uh, one Alexander Rudolph uh, at Viking Rudolph, who asks uh, Booger Red or Booger Red. Um, I, I'm uh, well, not sure if you can elaborate on what exactly that is. Well, if you know me at all, and you know my strong hatred because I'm not a fan of Sting, but I am a humongous fan of The Undertaker. Like, I would cry if I ever met him. And, like, you could, you could say what you want about that, but I'd be a grown man crying if I ever met old Booger Red. Like, I am a huge Undertaker fan. And all me and Alex <laughs> ever talk about when we're together is Undertaker. Awesome. So I, I, I believe, so you're an, very much anti the assumed Undertaker Sting WrestleMania contest that everyone's saying that's I, happening, which I doubt, I doubt entirely. I honestly could give two shits. Like, I don't want to see Sting <laughs> at all. I watched him on TNA on Thursday, and let's just say he takes his shirt off and calls it a day. I don't want to see it. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and we also had another question from uh, uh, someone who we had on a couple weeks ago, uh, Kelly Kyle, uh, at Kelly Kyle Photo, who asked, how's your mom doing? Uh, uh, <laughs> I know your mom very supportive of your, your professional wrestling career. Uh, she's doing good. She's, uh, she's just chilling now. She just uh, makes me dinner when I get home from the weekend and uh, when I get home from the gym. 
She uh, she takes care of my cat when I'm not around. She feeds my fish, but uh, most of them are dead, so she's not doing a very good job at that. So uh, <laughs> she's doing good though. She uh, she doesn't really want to travel much anymore. She's getting a little older, you know, putting around. Mm. Well, uh, good 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 vibes out to uh, to Mama Ginger. Um, I and I guess uh, uh, going back. Uh, we started to ask this, uh, and I, I think we want to make this sort of recurring thing from uh, our last interview what we had with Jock Sampson, um, talking about one of the things we wanted to discuss um, with the talk about indie wrestling, uh, sort of a general question, uh, and you don't have to be any specific or anything or, or shoot on anyone, but uh, we want to know sort of the good and the bad that comes from indie wrestling. What do you think, I guess, sort of a, just a blanket statement, what do you think is something really good currently that's you know, sort of of the state of independent wrestling and then also something that uh, you don't find so great? Um, if I was to say the good, you know, like, you know, this is going to be like self-promoting, but like the good would be like St. Louis Anarchy, uh, Absolute mm. Intense Wrestling, ACW, Inspire, Jakara, National Pro Wrestling Day. That's all the good about wrestling, you know, like places that work hard, places that like promote their asses off have fans and their guys go out there and bust their ass the bad side would be like guys that just do it every other month and if that's what you want to do that's fine but like when you run a show just to run a show you don't promote there's two people in the crowd you know the guys aren't motivated to go out there and wrestle in front of two people you know like it's not supposed to be like beer league softball it's a profession it's a business you want to make money and you want to, you know, grow your product in your company. You're not going to do that mm. if you're running in Dupo, Illinois, behind the Hucks, because you said <laughs> you promoted the fucking Hucks. You know, no one's right. going to show up to those shows. Yeah, I agree. I, I actually had a discussion about it this past weekend, and sort of this consensus was uh, like sort of the idea of wrestling for the sta- for the sake of wrestling. Mm-hmm. And I think that's something that's really sort of damaging in a sense because if you don't build an audience and you don't build you know, and, and like you said, build sort of that that connection with people. Like it, it, it differentiates the great from the not so great. I, I gotta ask: is, is this something that happens a lot in your neck of the woods in Texas, St. Louis, like, or, or in between, or something like that? Because I, I can't say like we have like we talked about a little bit last week. We have like four promotions in the area up here in Pittsburgh, um, and I haven't seen them like the ones I know get you know at least a hundred fans. You know. Uh, you know, good ones, two, three, or, you know, higher, you know, depending on like, how big the show is, you know, when it was super indie or something's obviously higher than that. Um, like, do you get a lot of like very poorly run stuff like, like often down there? Um, I can't speak for, for Texas much cause I really only work, I've only worked for like lately inspire pro and ACW and both those crowds are always good. And those are, those two companies are, you know, well off in my opinion, mm-hmm. but like, in like the the, the 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 border of Missouri and Illinois because I, I live twelve minutes away from the border to go over to, you know, Illinois and anybody can run there. In Missouri you need a license so it's harder for that crap to get over here. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But like Illinois, like basically every every time tax season is around, someone's gonna run a show just because, <laughs> oh, I wanna get my son in the title match and put him over, you know? Yeah, like who yeah. gives a fuck? No one cares about Joe Schmo winning the title. There's no rhyme or reason for that. Yeah. You have to mm-hmm. draw the fans in with something they wanna see. Yeah. You know, it's it's all a story. It's all the point of people taking themselves out of their real lives and, you know, watching a show for a couple hours and going, oh, that was awesome. Okay, now I got to get back to real life. They don't want to go to some crap show, which, which pretty much shits on any good indie wrestling in the area, and it kills your draw. It kills your crowd. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. And I definitely, and I guess that's cause I definitely um, uh, looked into, like, what does it take in this area? Uh, in, in Pennsylvania, obviously, we have the Athletic Commission. Uh, so it it does take a bit to get the license, and you have to deal with the insurance and everything. Um, so there's a really good bar to even get that far. I'm amazed that we do have four promotions that 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 make that five. Well, no, no, four ish actually. Um, that 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 can you know accomplish that and and actually run somewhat decent decent crowds amongst them. Um, definitely varying quality, and that's very debatable here in this area, um, of course. So. Yeah. But yeah. Oh, go, ahead. go ahead. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I guess I guess we can also talk about um, sort of. You, I mentioned sort of like your breakout year in uh, 2013. I wanted to know 
personally from you, Gary, uh, some of your goals um, upcoming for 2014, also, both goals personally in wrestling, but also maybe like talents you'd like to face coming down the line. Um, uh, what, what, what sort of is some of the stuff you'd like to do uh, in, the, in the coming year? Um, I guess just keep doing what I'm doing. Keep scratching and clawing my way up to anything, you know. I've always felt I've worked for what I have, and, you know, I'm just going to keep fighting to the top. You know, I'd like to get to the East Coast more, you know, like get to that Philly area, New York, anything around their surrounding areas. Uh, I feel like a lot of my top matches or top opportunities have always been in uh, St. Louis Anarchy, but it seems like a lot of my top opportunities now are coming out of IWA Mid-South as well. So mm -hmm. just I know you're wrestling, I believe, uh, B-Boy upcoming. Uh, so yes. that's definitely another match I think uh, a lot of people should definitely check out. Yeah, uh, B Boy is kind of like the one of the guys that kind of innovative. I guess you could say what I do, like strong style, or you know, like the style I am, like your smash mouth in your face style. So uh, mm -hmm. I'm really looking forward to you know taking what he does and you know taking what I do and see what we can do. Awesome, very cool. And I definitely encourage anyone if you're if you're listening to this and and you want someone that will definitely deliver and and someone that'll bring an entertaining aspect to your to your pro wrestling show i would highly encourage uh you to book gary J because that i definitely think this year should be the year that you definitely uh make some make some recognition from people so um well thank you very much gary I, um i guess we'll have you sort of stick around to sort of uh help uh chime in on the discussion uh whenever you uh, would like to uh but if you want anyone uh to uh follow you or uh contact you where can they uh where can they do that uh, well, I'm going to plug a couple things first before I do that, if you don't mind. Uh, please, please. Absolutely. All right, well, you know, obviously everybody knows about uh, St. Louis Anarchy, but if you're looking for us online, you go to stlouisanarchy.com. Uh, we have a huge double shot weekend coming up at the end of the month where you'll have the Young Bucks versus the Sex the Bombs, Davey Vega and Matt Fitchett on the first night. You'll have me versus Roderick Strong, and plus pretty much all the great talent in the area as, as well on that night. And then March 1st, you have the hooligans who are making a name for themselves a lot lately and making waves versus the young bucks. And then you'll have me versus Kyle O'Reilly in a two out three falls match. And if you want to look for any of that or buy your tickets online, you can now buy St. Louis Anarchy tickets online. That's a new thing for us this show as well. And, uh, I believe February 8th, I'll be at IWA mid South. I believe he's doing a double shot that day. He's doing, uh, an afternoon show, a benefit show, and then that night I'm wrestling a b-boy. And I was just told that on the afternoon show, it is me, Kristen Rose, and Jordan Grace versus b-boy, Chris Hero, and Angelus Lane. So oh, that would wow. be interesting as well. Oh, that should be very interesting. Yep. And then everybody should, of course, check out National Pro Wrestling Day because, you know, you never know what's going to happen there. Never know. <laughs> Yeah, you know, well, we may see. You may see a ginger show up. You never know. Um, but yeah, uh, so so let's get into uh, let's get into some of the discussion. Uh, one of the things that we want to mention is the thing that we started a couple weeks ago here on the show, which is the indie wrestling challenge. Uh, if you follow us uh, on any of our social media accounts or on our YouTube channel, youtubecom slash wrestling mayhem show, uh, you can check out. Uh, the challenge that we have for this week, basically, uh, me and Sorg sort of decide amongst ourselves. We pick one independent wrestler uh, that we think that you should know about, and uh, we there's a playlist on our YouTube channel of uh, matches featuring them that you can check out uh, and uh, learn more about them. Uh, and we want to hear feedback from you guys of what you like, what you don't like. Do you think what you know? sort of expose you to more people uh, uh, because that's what indie wrestling is about: seeing people that you've never seen before. Uh, and the person that we had. For this week's challenge is somebody that I know Gary knows very well in his uh, travels, uh, teaming, and also facing, uh, and that's Davey Vega. Uh, now, Sorg, I, 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 this this challenge has sort of been started <laughs> to sort of expose you to a lot of new stuff. Yes. Uh, uh, what what were your thoughts uh, 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 from this past week's challenge? Uh, as usual, because uh, I mean, this kind of started because we talked about uh, I forgot we, we were we were talking about Shakara or everybody that like this is wrestling is fun guys. And I'm just like make me a compilation, and he's really good about like I know you watch a lot of the indie stuff on the YouTube's. I have trouble. I don't I don't know where to start half the time. You got uh, a lot to do. Yeah, so. I got a lot to catch up catch up on, uh, of course. And uh, yeah, this was a pleasure. Uh, one, it was great to not have uh, crazy Japanese uh, screaming and commentary to worry my <laughs> wife to when I'm listening to this at three in the morning while I'm editing the show. 
Uh, <laughs> so that was a plus over last week's challenge with, uh, I forget her name. I'm uh, sorry. Kana. Kana, yes, of course. Uh, so, so that was kind of fun. Uh, but no, this was this is a pleasure. This was a pleasure. Uh, this is the kind of indie wrestling that, that I seek out indie wrestling for. Um... Because I didn't know what to make of uh, uh, Vega, you know, first looking at him, because, you know, he's not, like, you know, a built guy or anything like that, but he was just very... Vega's inter- a schmuck. He's a loser. <laughs> Why are you watching Davey Vega? Yeah, that's your first impression, right? Yeah, exactly. He's a schmuck. Now, Vega's improved over the last couple of years, and, like, he's another guy that I think deserves opportunities, but... uh yeah, he's a, he's a schmuck and a loser, if you ask me. <laughs> <laughs> we all we all know who won that match and who got that jacket. So, exactly. See, that's all that matters is who won the jacket. <laughs> The but jacket is very telling. There is a lot of treats in here because I know you you compiled me a list. You you tend to put a lot of good names like uh, that I know in here that helps me kind of like kind of have a level have a base level of this like like there's some stuff from uh, Anarchy where he took on uh, Jerry Lynn in a very good match. Uh, there was stuff with Lewis Linden I, I've seen up here in the in the Cleveland and the Pittsburgh areas. Uh, Kyle O'Reilly, of course, we know from uh, Ring of Honor, and and he could hang with all these guys. Uh, uh, very good. Um, yeah, I was really impressed with David Vega. I, what 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 really sticks out with you? Like, why why did you want to uh, expose everybody to David? To, excuse me, uh, Vega. Because uh, uh, Vega yeah. gives him money too. That's why. <laughs> uh, yeah, um, yeah, I love David Vega. Um, I like I said. Uh, uh, met meeting him sort of first through Anarchy Championship Wrestling, uh, sort of his level of consistency. I think um, both him and and Gary, who we have on, are two guys who I think are f- two guys from the Midwest who I really think um, it's a shock to me that not everyone's booking these guys because they're they they've got a look to them, they've got a style, they know how to entertain, and they're just consistently um, they consistently deliver. Um, and I think Vega, in my opinion, is going to be one of those guys that I think is truly going to break out. Um, if you want to see him break out, uh, we mentioned the St. Louis Anarchy double shot, both, uh, that tag matches that he's having with the young bucks. And I know on the next night he's wrestling Roderick strong. I think those matches will be very telling as to, um, showcasing Davey Vega's potential and the fact that, um, he can do a lot of great things in the world of, uh, in the world of wrestling. Mm. Um, so yeah, uh, that's that was this past week's challenge. Um, so uh, go support Davey Vega Definitely. as and, well as all the St. Louis talents. Um, he's and one of those. Go- I just want to say before you move on, uh, he, he's oh, one yeah. of those guys. Like I know a lot of time also with indie wrestling. I think Ring of Honor uh, a couple years ago. I, this is my big complaint with Ring of Honor was you had a lot of guys that could do the indie moves and do the flips and do like good wrestling, but they were just so bland. Like I, I remember tuning in like you know to some indies and in Ring of Honor, and just I couldn't tell anybody apart. Uh, and, and, uh, this is one of those guys that definitely has a personality that, that does stick out. Absolutely. I think, I, I think personality is one of the biggest parts of the game. Like yeah. I think having a character that, you know, draws you to the fans is one of the biggest parts of the game. Like I, I honestly think like you could be a great wrestler, but if you don't have that personality, it's hard to get places. I think you need to have that it factor and you need to stand out from the bunch. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Absolutely. Exactly. So yeah, uh, that was this past week's challenge. Go support Davey Vega, not just uh, through viewing stuff on YouTube, also buy a DVD or two, or, or go uh, go to a local show that he's uh, competing at. So uh, go support and if you independent buy wrestling. Him anything, if you want to <laughs> buy him anything, he loves the Ghostbusters. Go buy. <laughs> That's very true. Uh, I, I I believe I bought a a T-shirt from him recently to aid in his uh, in his Ghostbuster fandom. So uh, yeah, so go. Go uh, give Davey Vega all your Ghostbuster uh, swag, I guess the kids are calling it. Then he needs um, to come to Pittsburgh. And so we'll get these guys a book, Gary J, Davey Vega here in Pittsburgh. And you can meet the Steel City Ghostbusters. They're always at the Comic Cons. And it'll be go- everything, <laughs> everything will be gravy. Vega would Sounds cry good. like a bitch for that, I guarantee it. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Um, so yeah, uh, let's let's move into some of the discussion we have for this week. And the one thing that I know, Sorg, you definitely wanted to discuss is an event that you attended this past weekend. Uh, we mentioned Ring of Honor; they were in Pittsburgh this past weekend. Yes, yes, yes. I, I got. Uh, go, go ahead. Oh, go ahead. No. Um, yeah, I, I I admittedly have trouble uh, again keeping up with Ring of Honor TV. Um, just because of where it's on time here and everything, I hate having to track down the video. Uh, but anytime I hear they're coming to town, I buy a ticket. Doesn't matter. It, I'm going to it. Uh, the TV taping since they started coming back uh, a couple years ago, since Sinclair bought them and they've had TV here, 
Um, I, I've just been completely on board with it and trying to drag somebody along with it every time. Uh, Dutters, who joined us actually uh, a Wrestling Mayhem show, uh, it was her first Ring of Honor. She, of course, you know, goes to all the WWE stuff. Either she's working at them or she gets tickets for them because she works down at the uh, console arena. Um, and this was a little bit different. Typically, they have the shows out at um, the Ross River Ice Gardens, a good bit out of town, like almost an hour drive out of town. Uh, and, of course, obviously, this is one of those deals you know Ring of Honor catches on, uh, uh, swings into town whenever, like, WrestleMania happens. Um, mm -hmm. And they did so here with Pittsburgh. Um, so they got to have it downtown, actually. Uh, this is the first show, first non-WWE show I have ever attended downtown Pittsburgh, uh, mm -hmm. which was an experience in itself. Uh, but they had it at the David Lawrence Convention Center, which is like, wow, they had it at a giant convention center. But they had, like, a portion of it, obviously, uh, versus the other side. It was actually World of Wheels, which ironically had, probably not ironically, had uh, Chris Jericho and Sheamus at it. So they're very wrestling-themed uh, uh, bookings over there. Um, but and, and, of course, we got hit with some pretty crazy polar vortex, whatever the hell they're calling it, uh, snowstorms that day. So I was really worried about the attendance with this one. But it, it was pretty. It was um, actually really well attended. Uh, I didn't know they, they were calling this event "Wrestling's Finest" um, mm -hmm. going into it, but I, uh, they revealed at the beginning that they're, they're, this is actually a taping for three episodes. So the entire thing is going to be seen uh, on TV over uh, three weeks. I, I presume that's going to start probably in about two weeks, uh, knowing what the schedule usually is when I know they've taped episodes here. Mm -hmm. uh, so keep an eye out for that. Um, you know, again, not really a bad match on the card. I think it was it was it was pretty stacked top to bottom. Even with the uh, news that Adam Cole was injured going into it, Paul London actually wasn't able to make it uh, as well due to weather. Um, but the re uh, replacement match, I think, almost stole the sh the, the show. Uh, I know Cedric Alexander was in it, but I, you know, I didn't know the name of the other guy. Um, again, not following TV that closely. Mm -hmm. um, Really good, like I said, really good turnout. Um, um, I gotta say, I'm really good about judging numbers, but they had to have, to have about a thousand people in there. Um, definitely the seats weren't full by any means, but there's enough people in there that I think it's gonna look good on TV. Um, and I, yeah, I'm certainly, a, I'm, I'm sure it would have been even fuller. Just judging by as many people told me they couldn't make it because of weather. Um, I think it would have been you know, pretty pretty crazy in there. Um, crowd was hot for it. Crowd was insane for it. I think a lot of them showed up Sunday night in <laughs> Pittsburgh, to be honest. Um, so that might have attributed to some of the uh, interesting conversations that's been happening out of the Royal Rumble. Um, also, great, also great to see, and I know you're getting to see him a good bit down there in Texas, uh, a friend of the uh, Mayhem show, uh, Ray Rowe. Yes, I know he's been part me. of the uh, Top Prospects Tournament. I believe this was the finals against a guy named Hanson, I found out later, which looked like I, we thought he was Mike Knox with the beard. Um, <laughs> so really good to see that and see, seeing him get a lot of respect on a little bit of a bigger stage here. Um, he's definitely a guy that we saw you know, here in, in Pittsburgh with Cleveland Mafia. Great matches against Samoa Joe. Uh, again, some uh, good respect there as well. I, uh, Dutters, who I mentioned, she, she was completely sold on this. It was, it was a different uh, feel, and uh, hopefully from that I'm going to be able to talk her into coming to some of the more local regular indie shows. Um, uh, first time seeing Tomosa Ciampa in a, in a mm. you know, I think he was coming off an injury before, so I didn't really get to see much with him before. Um, 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 of course, uh, the Cliff Compton situation uh, going on there. Uh, really good responses, really big event feel. Um, uh, I've attended uh, Ring of Honor uh, in Philly for the old HDNet tapings in Manhattan Center, uh, for I think it was a final battle uh, several years ago, and um, this, you know, definitely not at the peak of a Manhattan Center, but I think it was really close with this. I think the venue helped a lot because um, it was always very wide open out there at the Ice Gardens. Because one of those were the, you know, where they set up like in a corner, <laughs> practically. Because <laughs> it's a giant ice rink, right? And and they're just set up on like, kind of like tucked in one side, and it just feels like so. I don't think like the energy is really, you know confined very well um but really good to see that really good to see just wrestling just really kind of thriving here in the area so much so that you know these guys are able to come in and do their thing and get a lot of respect for it um and seeing guys and it's always great seeing guys that i know you know roll through for iwc and everything like Mel mike elegant uh you know like you know chris hero you know before he went to nxt i know he was around a lot um you know uh you know, like i say ray row and everybody like that adam cole as well has been through 
Um, so once again, just just another great show. And, and as usually happens, and I feel I, I, every time this happens, I feel like uh, they know, Amen. Because I know, like, like the I think the next event is in San Antonio. The very right next way. event, I believe that's in two weeks. Yeah, in, in two Antonio, weeks. So. It's just like this, this, this bouncing back and forth thing is is is, is really. I, I half the time I think all they go to is Pittsburgh uh, down your way and Baltimore. You know, uh, <laughs> I mean that that's like anytime I hear a show coming up, it, it feels like it's those three spots, and that's it. Do you have you guys gotten TV down there? Um, we haven't, um, I think they're going to be taped. I think they're going to do like they did for the Pittsburgh show and take sort of some of yeah. the matches for television, yeah, which should be interesting. Yeah. It feels like they're, they're kind of splitting that off a bit and said, cause when they did the TV tapings here, it was like seven episodes and it was, it, it, <laughs> it was like this time of year and there was like no heat in that building. It was just unbearable, but it, you didn't want to stop watching and go warm up in the, the other, in the, uh. Uh, other area where, where they actually had heat, like by the concession stand and everything. Um, but um, but no, it, it's really great to see that, that, that they're, they're doing good with this. And I know we kind of like loot them in with the indies here, but um, um, they're real close to not, you know. And, and I, think, mm-hmm. I, I think they're on the up curve of this whole Sinclair deal and getting guys in there like Matt Hardy, love him or hate him. Uh, Chris Hero to really kind of elevate that a little bit with some a little bit of face value enough, and, and of course the AJ Styles stuff recently, um, mm-hmm. that might be a little bit to make more people pay attention. But you're definitely seeing I'm seeing just casual wrestling fans catching onto this left and right, and every time you do it, I know IWC there they use IWC's ring, International Wrestling Cartel's ring, and they're there passing out stuff. There's people people passing out stuff for Extreme Rising. So even if this is just a a a um, you know, gateway drug to the indies locally, I, I think is just a tremendous thing, you know? Um, so, I mean, that's my take on that. Uh, and, and definitely check out those episodes. I think it's going to be a really uh, good show for TV. Really, really, really hot matches off of that. Very cool. Very cool. Uh, so yeah, I would encourage you to uh, go support ring of honor. Uh, like I mentioned, hopefully I'll be at that event uh, in two weeks in San Antonio. So, so you what, get your we'll... take on recent ring of honor. <laughs> Yeah, there we go. Um, it'll be nice. Actually, um, if, you, if you go to the Ring of Honor shows in San Antonio, buy ACH an Icy. He likes blue raspberry. Yes. <laughs> I believe ACH is in a, a proving ground uh, match with the tag team champions, so that will be interesting to see. Yeah, he's been teaming up. Uh, I forget who he's teaming up with. With uh, Tadarius Thomas. Tadarius Thomas. So, uh, yeah, Rush. Uh, Adrenaline Rush, I think, is their team. That'll be yeah. cool, because uh, uh, last time they were in San Antonio, ACH wrestled Lethal. Uh, in a singles match, which was very good. Um, I'll, I'll be interesting to see uh, to Darius Thomas live, so that should be very cool to see. Yeah. Um, the uh, the uh, the next thing we definitely have to talk about on the uh, in the Indie Mayhem show, the big thing uh, that's being talked about all throughout Indie Wrestling is that National Pro Wrestling Day is coming up. We actually got an email uh, from Alexander Cars, our good friend, to help promote that. Uh, that uh, reads National Pro Wrestling Day. National Pro Wrestling Day. It's free to attend at Easton, and you can watch the stream for free on YouTube on their site, nationalprowrestlingday.com. Worth noting, it seems the Chikara story that's developed over the past few months is coming to a head at National Pro Wrestling Day. New Ashes videos and teasers have hinted that something big is happening. I'm excited. So yeah, uh, uh, we talked on the Mayhem Show last year a lot about National Pro Wrestling Day. Uh, this. Uh, from back uh, last year. Uh, I think it'll be a very interesting show. I'm excited to watch it live uh, on the YouTubes. Um, very different sort of format to when they did National Pro Wrestling Day mm-hmm. last year. Uh, for those that don't remember, it was basically a two, or I, it was a one day event with two different shows um, spanning from the afternoon and the evening uh, with uh, represent, representation from many, many companies um, all throughout the U.S. Um, this time it's a little bit different. Uh, it's a one, basically one event, uh, featuring a lot of the, uh, the, uh, wrestling is promotions, uh, and a lot of the talent that's coming from there, but I do actually, I'm, the card looks very interesting. Um, and a card that I seem, I personally am very excited about. Um, the main event, uh, will be Colt Cabana versus, uh, Drew Gulak in a two out of three falls match. Um, for those that remember Drew Gulak, he competed at the uh, Wrestling is Respect match back at last year's National Pro Wrestling Day against Francis O'Rourke, which a lot of people were saying the match was the match that stole the show. So um, that could be very interesting. Uh, Francis O'Rourke will be in competition against Eddie Kingston, 
Uh, we have uh, Ring of Honor's Mike Bennett against Hollow Wicked. Uh, there's going to be a six-man tag featuring the Baltic Siege and the Block Party. Um, and tons of uh, really cool stuff. Um, it's interesting though. A lot of a lot of wrestling is talent, as I mentioned before. Um, but I think that definitely could have some play into what's going to happen with this whole um, this whole Chikara uh, situation that started back in July. Um, hopefully, I think we'll get some resolution to it because I know it's something that a lot of people have been interested about and sort of. Um, uh, been w- wanting to know what's going to happen. Um, so hopefully uh, in Eastern Pennsylvania, National Pro Wrestling Day will give us some answers. Um, I'm excited. I, I'm, I'm excited to watch and uh, see what happens. Uh, and that's this weekend on the 1st, uh, which is this Friday, uh, 1 p.m. Eastern time at Eastern Pennsylvania. Uh, like you said, you can go to the event. The event is free and the stream of the event is free uh, because they are raising awareness um, against – uh, for the uh, Against Malaria Foundation, uh, which you can currently donate to on their website, nationalprowrestlingday.com. So you can make a donation uh, uh, for a really good cause and watch some free, uh, pro, uh, great independent pro wrestling. So um, I'm, I'm excited. Um, so, guys, I assume you're definitely very excited as you attended National Pro Wrestling Day last year. Yeah, and I think I think the changes make sense um, as far as uh, uh, I, I I do miss I like the concept uh, when they took like a match from each promotion and they got the feature. It wasn't just like their circle of wrestling is and stuff like that. Like it, it did you know have IWC? They did have uh, Ring of Honor represented and, and a bunch of other ones. Um, so it was a nice sampler platter of everything going on. Of course, as a show that flowed. Uh, it kind of got weird at points. <laughs> it, was long, it was a long day of wrestling. It, well, no, 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 not even just the length of it. It just got weird at points <laughs> because, um, it, you know, you definitely can't please everyone. And there was just definitely um, a lot of drastically, you know, versus like, you know, a show. Like, I want to say when you go to a promotion, when you go to, uh, uh, you know, uh, say a Inspire or you go to San Luis Anarchy, you expect like kind of one style of show versus another, right? Like, mm-hmm. like, you know, I'm going to go to this show and it's going to be this. I know that this show is going to be this kind of wrestling. Uh, so just imagine if, you know, they're locally for you guys. You are Inspire people, your Sanar- your, your Anarchy people, your, uh, what's the other one? Uh, you, you got a, what was, it, what was it, River City or something out there. Mm-hmm. Um, each one of them selected a match that represented their company and mashed them all together into one show. You know, how different yeah. do you think that would be? Now throw in, like, here's a wrestling is fun, respect kaiju big battle um you know like i felt like when iwc went they had um, you know friends of the show logan shulo and john mcchesney there i thought they really represented like a very different kind of match but i don't know if people liked it because it was that different it was that different yeah <laughs> like it was yeah, a really and you got and you got like czw you got you know a yeah. bunch of different like beyond was different there. styles of companies yeah yeah it was definitely it was late in the day and everything i don't think people were ready to think about the wrestling they were watching uh as well <laughs> uh but they definitely delivered of course um so i i don't know it, it it's uh i I think they made the right changes. I like that it's awareness. This thing is awareness, awareness, awareness. You know, again, you know, like I was speaking about, I, I like that people are getting gateway drugged into this. Um, hopefully this is something, you know, that gateways you from. I'm a fan of this promotion. Oh, what's all this stuff over here? You know, I think that only mm-hmm. only helps, you know, in general to, to support all that kind of stuff. And everybody wins. Absolutely. Uh, so, yeah, that's uh, this Friday. I encourage you to check that out. Um, right, sa- I- um, Saturday. Or Saturday, excuse me, not Friday. Uh, the the first, February first, um, and who knows? Uh, from some speculation on tonight's show, you may see um, a certain squad of sorts there. I I, I I'm just just speculating, um, but you yeah, never know. Speculation. Uh, I'll probably be taking a nap <laughs> that day. <laughs> <laughs> well, there there you have it. Um, so yeah, that's the big thing that's happening. Uh, the only other event that I do want to touch on that's happening this weekend, uh, if you want to go support some good independent wrestling, is uh, one of the top independent promotions in the California area, and that's Pro Wrestling Gorilla, uh, who's holding their annual DDT4 event, their tag team tournament. 
uh, which should be very exciting. That's this Friday, Friday, uh, January 31st at the uh, American Legion Post 308 in Reseda, California. Uh, a stacked uh, a listing of talents uh, competing in this uh, tag team tournament that should really be something you should check out. Uh, PWG has been having an amazing couple of years uh, as far as talent, of our, as far as events go. Um, and I encourage you, if you uh, are in the California area, you have to check this out because there's going to be a lot of top stars there and a lot of uh, wrestling that I think you should check out. And it's an, it's another one of those companies that, like we've mentioned many of times before, is very different and has a different feel to it and um, is just really, really great stuff. So, yeah, and the final thing that we are going to talk about on the Indie Mayhem show, uh, we mentioned the challenge from last week. we got to give you a challenge for this week to sort of uh, talk about uh, going into uh, the weekend. Uh, what you should check out, uh, this week's challenge, we mentioned National Pro Wrestling Day. We mentioned the main event for National Pro Wrestling Day, which is Colt Cabana against Drew Gulak. And the talent that we have on this week's challenge that we want you to check out is the one and only Drew Gulak. Uh, Gulak is someone that I think uh, a lot of people uh, three, four years ago uh, wouldn't know a lot about, but he has really made a sort of a breakout year um, in professional wrestling, he uh, originally trained under the uh, CZW Wrestling Academy. Um, it's uh, it's, it's um, interesting to see Gulak's growth. He's got a great character, but also combining that with his uh, wrestling ability, his uh, mat skills, and his, um, his the fact the such great technician that he is really sort of puts him over the top. Um, so that should be really fun uh, to. Uh, to um, see Gulak, I think, wrestling Cabana this weekend, I think that match will be stellar. Um, but if you don't know about Drew Gulak or if you want to see more of him, we've organized a playlist mm -hmm. once again on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Wrestling Mayhem Show. Uh, that's, you're not limited to the playlist. You can check out anything you want. Um, even you can order a DVD or a video on demand or MP4, uh, of a show that he has participated in. And we want to know either by emailing us at good times at wrestling mayhem show.com or by tweeting us at mayhem show, what you think. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, go participate, uh, uh, in our challenge for this week and, and, uh, give us feedback as to what you think and join in on the indie wrestling conversation. Definitely. And, and I'm actually surprised, uh, pulling up this playlist, your first video is last year's national pro wrestling day match yet, which I believe this is for wrestling is respect, right? Yes, indeed. Uh, like I said before, a match that a lot of people, uh, consider the best of that weekend. And there's some good stuff, um, on that playlist. There's also him wrestling. I believe you mentioned, uh, from the ring of honor show you went to Cedric Alexander. I looked it up. He actually wrestled Andrew Everett, uh, who, uh, wrestled at national pro wrestling day as Chiva kid. Uh, for those that oh, don't remember. Really? Yes. The, uh, the, wonder uh, that was way better. Yeah. I mean, that's my problem with ring of honor when I'm not, you know, paying attention to the show and know everybody. I was like, Oh man, this is a jobber match. And like, Nope, Nope, no, these guys are jobbies. You know, <laughs> it, it, and there's like a tremendous match. Um, well, yeah, I remember yeah. TV Kid like really kind of stealing the show at uh, National Pro Wrestling Day as well. So mm -hmm. that that's really good to know that that's him. Um, yeah, recently, uh, I'm asking not too far after the As Andrew Everett, and there is a match on that playlist of Gulak versus Everett for uh, Beyond Wrestling, mm -hmm. um, which is another company that Gulak has made his home. Um, so yeah, that's uh, sort of all that stuff you can find on awesome. that playlist um, that you can get at youtube.com slash Wrestling Mayhem Show. Um, so yeah, participate in uh, the challenge for this week and uh, go support a lot of great indie wrestling out there. All right. Uh, once again, I want to thank our guest, Gary J., Go check them out. Uh, you're on Facebook, I know, and also uh, at Stiff Robo Ginger on the Twitter. Yep, and if you want to email me for bookings, go to barnowl18 at aol.com. That's right. I still have an aol.com account. <laughs> <laughs> that, that means you're, you're like trendy, right? Like bring it back. So keeping it real. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to bring MySpace back, but it takes too long to actually load into it now. There's like a thousand pop-ups on that thing. Yeah, Justin Timberlake kind of ruined that for the rest of us. Um, so with that, and of course, go check us out. The usual place is WrestlingMayhemShow.com. You can find this show, The Indie Mayhem Show, on iTunes, Stitcher, YouTube, and of course, yeah, everywhere else. Um, you can also, oh, also on Spreaker, we do have an account over there as well. Please comment. Uh, please share with your friends if uh, you, you, you dig it. You have other friends that are into indie wrestling. Um, and want to get it on the conversation. And, of course, the other conversations going on our Wrestling Mayhem Show Facebook group. we got a lot of great talk in there about indies, about the mainstream stuff all over the place, some stuff that 
sometimes doesn't even fit wrestling, but we fit that square peg in the round hole. Um, <laughs> and, of course, you can drop us a line at goodtimesatwrestlingmayhemshow.com. Uh, please just drop a subject line of indie in there so we know that it is for this show and not for their uh, Wrestling Mayhem show proper. And, of course, you can also drop us a line with your opinion uh, on 412-206-WMS0. So with that, uh, for Eamon, for... Uh, Gary J, uh, go get out there. Watch the indie wrestling, guys. See you next time. Never said I was a gangster or thug, but I'm an animal. Made up for the taste of the poor. Six, six.